Doc Positive here at the Paws Veterinary Clinic. And we're here with Max Man. Max, his hair is getting a little wild and woolly here this spring. But Max is about six years old and he is a Shih Tzu. And he doesn't want to hold still here. But he presented because Dad is concerned about his eyes. Now, you can see his right eye here. You know pretty nice and clear nice and then if you look over here all the matter all the debris everything built up on his eyeball and we just got done doing a Shermer tear test a Shermer tear test actually measures the tear production in his eye these are small strips that are marked with gradations. You can see the one over here, there's a dye. We put that in his eye and actually wait 60 seconds and his tear film should produce uh, adequate tears so that you can see it on that strip. And Max is not producing, basically he's not producing any tears whatsoever. And so the tear film on the eye is a protective barrier. Uh, dust, pollen, all sorts of things. Uh, normally if they land on a tear film, it washes it away from the surface of the eye, protects the eye, and keeps the eye nice and healthy. <laughs> and in certain breeds of dogs, particularly dogs that have the bulging eyes, Shih Tzus, Losses, Boston Terriers, Pugs, and so forth, uh, it can happen in any dog, but these dogs that have what's called book thalamus or bulging eyes are prone to KCS, keratoconjunctivitis sica, dry eye. Now, that dry eye situation uh, puts the cornea at risk of damage, so we need to replace the lubrication. So I have here for Dad, we do have some artificial tears ointment. This is basically an ointment is... People tend to use drops because they can carry it in their pocket. They'll put a drop in every couple of hours that lubricates the eye. People also use a product called Restasis that helps to stimulate uh, the tear glands to produce tears again. Most dogs, by the time it's been diagnosed, it's very, very difficult to get those tear glands to again produce uh, protective tears. We are also temporarily going to put him on a triple antibiotic ointment because the eye has gotten secondarily infected. There's a product uh, some veterinarians use, which is cyclosporin. Cyclosporin is uh, an immunosuppressant. Uh, it does help, but it's considerably more expensive than artificial tears. Uh, in my personal experience, I tend to use uh, the Artificial Tears ointment. That way you only need to put it in once or twice a day. If you use drops, drops don't have an extended contact time. They don't last very long. you got to put it in very, very frequently. And these dogs, as you'll see, Max Man here, he's already a little head shy. He doesn't like it when you come near his face. And so if I give Dad drops... And tell him, here, uh, put these drops in every two or three hours. He's going to look at me like I got two heads, you know, because he's like, yeah, and how am I supposed to do that? So with the ointment, you only have to put it in once or twice a day. Compliance is a lot better. It's a lot easier to do. So dry eye situation, KCS, keratoconjunctivitis sica with Doc Positive. Back in the day, uh, you can actually let him down for an hour, he says so. Uh, but back in the day... Veterinarians, and some veterinarians probably still do, they would actually do a surgery where they would take some salivary ducts uh, or salivary glands, produce saliva, and those uh, dump into the mouth. So some veterinarians sometimes somewhere figured out that if they rerouted those salivary ducts, it's very, very fine, detailed, delicate surgery, but they would reroute the salivary ducts to the eyelids and the eyeballs. So basically it would keep the eyes lubricated with spit, saliva. It works, but it's very, very uh, difficult, time-consuming, and uh, 
almost microsurgery. So dad, we're going to go with the artificial tears ointment and the eye antibiotic. Bye now.